It's that time of year again where we cozy up in our favorite sweaters. That means it's Gilmore Girls season. The last couple of weeks, I've seen a big spike in my Gilmore Girls series on YouTube. So clearly it's not just me that's desperate to return to Stars Hollow. In this video, we're going to explore how the cool girl trope manifests in this show, which it does very strongly. I want to give a big shout out to the commenter who actually inspired the idea for this video and they said would love an entire video on the cool girl. I feel like there's so much to unpack whether with characters or celebrities. So that's from not exposing my name 8003. <laughs> so you know who you are and your suggestion did not go unnoticed even though it took me eight months to get here. But better late than never, right? So grab your pumpkin spice lattes and let's get into it. show overall is a win for female characters but it was in the early 2000s so it's a sign of the times with some of the more regressive or sexist elements that pop up every now and then and for the most part they were pretty subtle it was overall an empowering show for women but where the main issue comes in is with this really forced over the top cool girl portrayal of Lorelai and Rory which doesn't recur just here and there it's very consistent but it was part of this not like other girls trope where everyone was so uncomfortable with the idea of being a woman and it was cool to try and be like a man everyone wanted to be different and unique and distance themselves from being like other girls and Gilmore Girls was literally ripe in that time. Let me take you back to a pivotal moment in pop culture when this term first emerged and became a thing and that was in no other than the movie and book Gone Girl with the character of Amy Dunn. Now if you haven't seen this movie I would so strongly recommend that you do because it truly is a masterpiece. In Gone Girl, Amy takes a long hard look at this persona she's been crafting that she made purely to land her husband, Nick. Here's the kicker, when she says, Nick and Amy will be gone, but then we never really existed. Nick loved a girl I was pretending to be cool girl. She's determined to destroy the guy that she's been trying so hard for so many years to appeal and cater to. But due to her trying so hard to be this perfect woman for him, this dream woman, she's lost herself as a result and now resents him for it. The writer Gillian Flynn, I'm obsessed with her books. The book sharp objects and dark places they're some of my favorite books in the world. She's so amazing but she took inspiration from her commentary on the 1998 rom-com There's Something About Mary who stars Cameron Diaz but she explained that the character Mary looks like Cameron Diaz but she's also a doctor and she also loves hamburgers and she starts out playing golf in the morning and I thought wow that's a cool girl and then I thought oh Right, she's been invented by guys. The whole premise of the film is how Mary drives every guy wild that she meets. And that's because she's a bundle of every male fantasy with a beautiful face. 2007's Transformers gave us a perfect example of the trope with Megan Fox, who is literally such a bombshell in this movie, but she also knows how to fix a motorbike and do all this cool stuff and she's really feminine. Black Widow also became popular in a male heavy space starring Scarlett Johansson because she truly is like one of the guys and doing all these cool exciting superhero things whilst looking stunning and she offers a supportive presence in the other Avengers lives without outshining them. But Gone Girl was the first piece to truly define and call out this term. It came out in a period of time where there were also a lot of songs written by guys who were saying that they love girls with low self-esteem who are beautiful and don't realize it. For example that One Direction song that's like oh you're so beautiful and you don't even know it which makes you even more attractive. And the main defining characteristic of this cool girl is regardless of if she eats hamburgers or 
is one of the boys. The main thing is that she has to be hot primarily. We can see this dynamic illustrated in Miss Congeniality, where the FBI agent Gracie starts out with all of the cool girl qualities, but she has to dress up all fancy as part of this mission. Now, after she undergoes this makeover and starts dressing all fancy, she gets all these compliments then for her kind of masculine tomboy qualities when previously in the film when she took less care of her appearance she was kind of the butt of the joke for being a bit messy and having these masculine characteristics but now she looks hot while doing it now it's charming rory and lorelei exactly fit the bill picture this they're exceptionally thin but don't let that fool you because they're not trying and in fact they don't exercise they start their day with Lo and behold, Pop-Tarts, yes, Pop-Tarts, and end the day with a big Chinese takeaway or a pizza. But their skin is perfect, their figure's perfect. They're not like those other girls who focus on what they eat and health all the time because that's just so pretentious and boring. And they're experts at picking the lettuce out of their hamburgers, leaving just the carbs part. Lorelai enjoys her beer straight from the bottle at home. Her and Rory are proper coffee addicts and it's this ongoing joke with all the guys that date them that they eat more than their boyfriends. Okay, it's one thing to say we should all be cool about food and chill out, but it's another thing when these women are also expected to cater to society's very extreme beauty standards you can never quite tell if they're wearing makeup like their hair's always shiny and their skin's glowy but they don't really have visible lipstick like a red lip for example unless it's a special occasion which makes them again appear effortlessly put together when it comes to movies they'll watch anything but they tend to prefer the more raunchy or kind of unique movies the r-rated ones you know the cool ones not the modern day rom-coms thank you very much that is not their cup of coffee they're the cool girls they go to see the bengals which is the perfect cool girl concert the bengals were an all girl group with big hair big earrings but they had broken up in 1989 meaning that for rory to like them she was listening to old records it's that idea of her liking them even before they were cool and there's nothing wrong with lorelei being a bit of a tomboy sometimes and it's not like the show takes it to an extreme where they never wear dresses or something or they resent everything girlish because if there's a party an event whatever Lorelai will wear a pretty dress and Rory actually quite enjoys getting dressed up with this little tiara or something for a party so but there's still often in other situations this resentfulness towards girly things or putting down women who do like to calorie count or who like more girly things like being a cheerleader and that's where the issue comes in if you're assuming that everything girls like is stupid then you're saying that girls themselves are stupid that everything worth doing everything valuable is male centered they also try really hard to frame Lorelai as the unexpected cool mum who is rebellious breaks the rules who always looks hot she was a teen mum so she also looks really young which also makes her cool because all the teachers and parents are like oh my god is that really Rory's mum and she'll literally drink beer with the boys and she's just so cool and again effortless with it but and that's okay that's completely fine but the problem is when the show just really keeps hammering at home to the point that it's a little bit ridiculous for example when Lorelai talks loudly through movies in the cinema with other people around which is actually pretty disrespectful when Luke offers her food she tries to make him go to the diner instead of just cooking her a nice breakfast at home one time Max started making Lorelai a dinner and she didn't eat but then when he's done and he starts getting up clearing everything away then she starts eating from the pot just ravenous wanting more and more the idea is that she's quirky or funny but actually it comes across as really annoying it's all part of the humor and that's why the first time watching Gilmore Girls because when I filmed my initial reviews I only watched the show once because it was so long but then when I re-watch certain scenes I see things I hadn't noticed before and I see the pretentiousness of it when you get over the initial ha ha humor you're like wait a second that's kind of rude the cool mum persona also prevents her from 
understanding the responsibilities of parenting, such as being there on significant milestones like Rory's first day at Chilton, which is a very prestigious private school and you have to make a good impression, like you can't slack off. There is a very strong parentification of Rory which prevents her from being a child and she never really got to experience that. So in later life, she's not good at handling the responsibilities of being an adult and gets very easily overwhelmed. For example, let me explain this. Uh, season one, episode two, Rory's first day of school. The mum messes up with setting the alarm, which she should have been more on it. But anyway, Rory's the only one taking it seriously and her mum's kind of laughing at her for being so uptight. Rory's plea for her mum to be there and come with her reflects her childish, understandable need for having her mum there in this big moment. But Lorelai emphasizes her cool mum persona by being reluctant to meet the headmaster or being organized to be properly dressed. Let me just read you the excerpt because I don't know if I'll be able to insert it with uh, copyright and everything. But Rory says, it's 7.10. Damn, I can't be late on my first day of school. You know what happens to people when they're late on their first day? Her mum replies, it's shorter. Rory replies, for the rest of the year they're labelled the late girl. Oh, so dramatic, Lorelai says. All of those things show Rory as taking on the role of the parent. She has her to-do list. It's a role reversal. And then later on, Rory's about to go into school. They're waiting outside and her mum says, I love you. Call me if you need me. Rory says, you're kidding, right? Lorelai, no. Call me if you need anything. You have to meet the headmaster, Rory says. Well, look at me, Lorelai says. I can't meet anybody who does anything in there. No, I look like that chick from the Dukes of Hazard. Then Rory says, this is my first day. You are not getting out of going in there with me, period. Now, when I first saw this show, I was kind of just adjusting to the characters. It's very early days, so I didn't really absorb it. It went right over my head. But now I've started rewatching the show. I'm like, what is that? You're her mum, you've only got one kid who's very easy to manage and you can't even get your shit together to properly help her adjust. And you know what? Rory's right. First impressions matter, especially at a school like Chilton. Moving on from that, let's talk about the general sexism in the show in regards to the cool girl trope. So part of this idea of them being cool girls is that they'll put down other women, which often makes them fat phobic, even in the revival where it's much more modern and current and there's no excuse to be doing this. For instance, the infamous hippo reference during the ballerina incident or Rory's comment about the ballerina having, not the ballerina, no, this redhead girl having fat thighs. Rory's treatment of Jess's girlfriend with the constant digs at her and the slut shaming just because she was jealous. And then there's the whole Lindsay debacle with Lindsay being framed as the villain because she was Dean's wife. Rory, literally has this thing, this affair with Dean, but Lindsay's somehow to blame? What? Even though she was the one that got cheated on. And by Dean cheating on Lindsay with Rory, it implies that what every guy really wants is the cool girl, not that blonde, loyal, feminine, stay-at-home wife. And it's funny too, because Jess's ex-girlfriend, who Rory didn't like, was also blonde. In the 2000s, when the show came out, women were conditioned to hate their bodies. And part of the joke was that you should make fun of your body as much as possible. And you would actually be looked down upon if you expressed body positivity too much. For instance, in Mean Girls, all the girls are in front of the mirror and pointing out everything they don't like about their bodies. And Katie was homeschooled her whole life, so she hasn't been socialized into this culture. So they all turn expectantly, staring at her, waiting for her to add something. And Katie is a little bit confused because she's like, oh, am I meant to say something? So she's like, I have really bad breath in the morning. <laughs> I will say, as much as I'm doing a critique of Gilmore Girls here, I need to point out because I really don't want you guys to think I'm being hateful. I love this show. That's why I'm making so many videos about it despite its flaws. I just love talking about it. I love the vibes. It's so cute. And I like Rory and Lorelai despite this as characters very much so. And I also want to point out that despite these issues, which are subtle, that's why I'm addressing them, Gilmore Girls is such a mild case of sexism compared to other shows of the 2000s, like One Tree Hill, which I'm gonna do a video on, but that show, 
which I actually like as well. It's a really good show, but that show, it was so much more prominent. I pointed this out in my Gilmore Girls deep dive, which you can check out in my Gilmore Girls playlist. I talked about that in more detail there, but Rory and Lorelai tend to have friends like Paris or Suki who aren't too much of a threat to them. But if someone is equally attractive or equally, I mean, conventionally so, or more smart or whatever, they can't be friends with that woman. Like they need to be the hottest girls in town, the it girls of town. When Luke starts dating Rachel, she's not even that much of a threat because she looks like Lorelai, which implies that Luke is just really looking for Lorelai because no one beats her. So the issue is really not how Rory and Lorelai are, but how the other women are portrayed, like trying to frame Lindsay as a villain when she was a very nice lady. We're meant to both sympathize for Lindsay and see her as like this idiot who should have known better. And they didn't really give her some unique attributes. All they did was show that she's determined to bake Dean a beautiful dinner as a way of keeping him interested in her, which is just a very simplistic, surface level way of showing her personality. Think of that damned on a read episode, which I don't particularly like, where Lorelai and Rory mock homemakers or women who want to be like Donna Reed and who want to cook and dress up in a, a pretty outfit and be stay at home wives. They don't really seem to get the memo that modern women, modern feminists, the point is that we don't shame other women for how they want to live their lives. We should just all do what we're compelled to do. And Rory seems to later try and be more accepting of this idea that everyone's different as she dresses up as Donna Reed and tries to cook a nice dinner for Dean, but it's very unclear as to whether she's being ironic or not, and she's clearly not really enjoying it. So it's not like she genuinely is like, oh yeah, I see the value of this role. No, it's more like, oh, I hope he's not mad at me. I'll try and make him like me by, by dressing up in a different way. It's not like her values change. No, it's more like she's doing it for him. I don't like that episode because it insinuates that Rory needs to change her beliefs or mold herself into what Dean wants. And I don't like Dean's whole attitude in that episode saying a wife cooking dinner for her husband and family is nice. How is that not nice? He doesn't seem to understand that. I mean, of course it's a nice idea, but he's not understanding this triple burden that women face of needing to do the emotional work and the housework and also maybe try and work full time. And he's sort of acting like they can do it all, which is too much pressure. So understandably in that scene, Rory is annoyed at him as she should be because he keeps making digs at her about it, like at the fact that she doesn't like Donna Reed. This really showed to me how incompatible they are because she's literally trying to create a life for herself and go to an Ivy League school. And he seems to want a different kind of woman. And then she's made to feel guilty because he got mad and so she has to do the whole Donna Reed act to patch things up. You shouldn't have to put on a massive petticoat and cook a dinner as a form of a, an apology for having an opinion on something. You should be allowed to disagree with your partner without them kind of mocking you for it and him making jokes about oppressed housewives and all this. Like if Rory doesn't want that kind of life for herself, that's okay. When Lorelai and Luke renovate their house, we see that Lorelai is indeed one of the guys. When she's surrounded by construction workers, she eats pizza, she cracks jokes and she teaches the dog to do tricks. And it's just really emphasizing that like those more feminine, traditionally feminine women like Emily, Sherry and Lindsay, that there's something wrong with them. I heard people saying that Rory and Lorelai are pick me girls, but that doesn't quite fit. Because of platforms like TikTok, the term pick me is always evolving. Originally, it was just meant to show a woman degrading herself for a man's attention, doing anything to be picked and noticed. But since then, it's used very loosely, often to degrade women for literally existing. And it's got this misogynistic tone to it that I don't appreciate because originally it was meant to be used to just encourage women to not be like that. It wasn't meant to put them down. It was just meant to say like, don't do everything for male validation. But in the case of Rory and Lorelai, of course they experience attraction to men, but they don't go out of their way to be liked by men for the most part. I would argue that Lorelai fits much more into the cool girl trope than Rory does. Often what the cool girl does is not really voice her own needs and just go along with what the guy wants and what will make him happy. And there are points when Rory and Lorelai are very vocal about what they want, but there are also points where they don't 
really put themselves first. But Lorelai seemed to have adopted this cool girl persona from a very young age in order to shield herself from her parents. Think of the graveyard scene in the revival where Rory just assumes that her mum will be comfortable with her sharing all the details of their personal lives and all this embarrassing stuff in a book. She assumes her mum will be a totally fine with that. But then Lorelai admits that she's not fine with the book because she only wants the public to see a carefully crafted persona of herself. And that basically it takes a lot of effort to be so, you know, hot, chill and charming. She's like, no, it takes a lot of effort to be me. I don't need people to see the real me. So Gilmore Girls isn't just about coffee and witty banter, it's about the art of being a cool girl. And Lorelai literally admitting that what she does takes conscious practice. So now we've established this, what's the problem? How can this trope be harmful or problematic? Narratives on screen use this cool girl persona to put down other women who aren't cool or too uptight and seem to care too much. In the movie Black Swan, the fun, sensual Lily makes the repressed good girl Nina feel kind of inferior and like her lifetime of hard work and striving for perfection means nothing because she's not as effortless and at ease as her fellow dancer um and Nina's played by Natalie Portman who by the way because I'm living in Paris at the moment I saw her at the theater the other day and I was like that's Natalie Portman I saw her three times I didn't want to bother her because she was literally talking with her friend and I was like, I'm not going to interrupt her evening. But like, how cool is that? I literally have loved her for years. But the ballet teacher points out to Nina, watch the way Lily moves. Imprecise but effortless. She's not faking it. So while Nina's anxious and hardworking, she apparently needs to just wing it and seem effortless and not show that she's putting in all this hard work behind the scenes. The teacher insists that he wants Nina to be more relaxed because she has potential. He wants her to just loosen up, be more in her body and not overthink things so much. So she doesn't fit the cool girl trope and she's made to feel insecure and uncomfortable for voicing her emotions, for being anxious and it's made even more clear when he starts hitting on her and kissing her and just expecting her to be okay with that like he's abusing his position of power as a teacher but he's sort of like oh just go with it don't worry about it he wants her to be more cool and apparently that would also encompass not resisting his advances another movie is forgetting sarah marshall which has again this woman who's literally the epitome of the cool girl she's the impulsive free-spirited rachel played by myla kunis who is literally one of the lads and she is fun outdoorsy she jumps off cliffs she's a bit messy and just does whatever and doesn't take things too seriously and she's meant to contrast the main character's ex Sarah who is of course blonde because these shows hate blonde women and uptight and wears pink and heels but like not in a good way like she's too feminine and she's fame obsessed and like really she's a real bitch. In the movie How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days which I actually really love but it does have this trope Andy drives away a guy because it's part of her magazine article about making a guy dislike you and she does this by trying to be the opposite of the cool girl because she knows the cool girl is what guys want so she tries to be the opposite of cool girl which is someone like super feminine needy um, emotional and hypersensitive here's the ironic twist andy is just so inherently cool that even when she's doing this act she can't stop him falling for her anyway the message this movie sends is that men like women who are unattached and undemanding and that they'll be put off by a woman who like has needs who cares and that's eh, it's not great and this seeps into Hollywood as well with real life celebrities like with the actress Jennifer Lawrence who has often been labeled as a cool girl. She was seen as the belle of the ball after tripping on the stairs on the way to get an award and it was just meant to be really funny and relatable or when she gets drunk at events or um, makes jokes about hygiene or whatever and it's just it's really funny because it's not expected of her as like this classy beautiful woman. As Anne Helen Peterson writes, these women are basically dudes masquerading in beautiful women's bodies reaping the privileges of both. Now things like tripping over and being ditzy whatever they're seen as attractive because Jennifer Lawrence is attractive but if you were not conventionally attractive those qualities would make you be seen as gross unhygienic and lazy and the media tends to 
kind of demonize ultra femininity in general. When you think of characters who are portrayed in a more negative light, like the seductress, femme fatale type, the mean girl, the bimbo, they are all often very feminine girls who wear pink. And the issue with trying to be the opposite of that, trying to be cool, is that if it's not genuine to you, if it's not authentic, it's a facade that will get exhausting as Amy from Gone Girl pointed out. You can't be too intense about anything. Like in Bridesmaids, Annie tries to adopt this persona to be more attractive to Ted and she says, I'm not like other girls saying, be my boyfriend, unless you were like, yeah, then I'd go, maybe? <laughs> So she's trying to not seem too interested, but she really is. But that whole act ultimately leaves her feeling disempowered. This comes from misogyny that's been forced on women since we literally came out of the womb. It's in our literal DNA. The media we consume, like those rom-coms, those narratives, they're written by men and they affect the way that we view ourselves. Basically saying, be so go with the flow that a man finds you attractive, don't have needs or expectations. Myla Kunis and Jennifer Lawrence have been labeled as cool girls, but that doesn't necessarily serve them either because it's a bit of a balancing act in the media. Someone had blogged about Jennifer Lawrence saying, can you stop pretending to be normal now? And they were kind of putting her down for this persona. So I don't really think we can win either way because people then go, okay, well, is she faking this personality? Is this a performance so people will like her? And people don't like faked authenticity, so they would judge that as well. You can never win. I mean, think of this phrase that we hear all the time in society of, I don't like girls who wear too much makeup and dress up too much. I like casual, kind of natural girls, no makeup. Raise your hand if you've heard this before, because I certainly have. Guys will say this, yet nine times out of 10, men will pick a girl in a photo who is wearing makeup. There was a woman on TikTok who explained this and I hope her account pops up again because she nailed it with how she worded it. But basically she was saying there's a billion dollar makeup industry run by men saying that women need all these products to be beautiful. Photos of celebrities, everything's about looking good and plastic surgery targeted at us that men get way less often. But apparently we're not meant to care about this or wear makeup. It's a form of virtue signaling because some men use this to excuse themselves from the responsibility of like needing to pay for the expense of those things as the girl on the TikTok explained which I can't remember her name now which is so annoying that is literally so true because if they acknowledge like yes you have spent hours on your makeup and you have spent a lot of money on these products then they would like actually need to validate that whereas if they just say oh I don't really care I don't, I don't really like makeup it doesn't look that good anyway then Boom. Even though wearing makeup has a significant impact on how we're perceived even in the workplace, we're seen as more likable and competent. Often it comes from this sexism of thinking that their opinion even matters about whether you should wear makeup or not. Because they have this judgment or scrutiny sometimes, like they assume we're doing it for them or we're doing it because we're insecure. And that's just a whole bunch of assumptions that aren't true. I know personally, I love how I look with makeup and I love how I look without it. It's not about trying to cover up something or that I'm like fake. If a guy complimented my makeup and said it looked good, that would be such a green flag to me. Like by acknowledging that I'm wearing it, knows I'm wearing it, knows it looks good, and doesn't then judge me for it. And there's also this idea that if you do wear makeup, it needs to be really seamless and subtle so they could almost believe that you woke up looking like that. So we find ourselves navigating this fine line between enhancing our features, but also keeping, maintaining this illusion of effortless beauty. When this trope appears in Gilmore Girls, for example, the creator is actually a woman, Amy Sherman Palladino, but you still see it popping up because I guess she grew up in a very different society that was shaped by these ideals and biases. But also in the world of television, commercial success does play a major role. So maybe she and the writers, other creative people thought this show will do better and it will be more popular with teenage girls if we have Lorelai and Rory be the cool girls. So that's how you look when you've just woken up? Um, yeah. Nothing in my life is fair. They have to appeal to a wide audience, appeal to market demand, etc. So that is also part of it. Now I'm aware this is a very deep critique of this trope and everything I don't like about it. But again, I want to emphasize that Gilmore Girls is not the worst show in the world. <laughs> and also there is plenty of feminism in the show and it has lots of merit. Gilmore Girls has many moments of really positive friendship between the women like Suki and Lorelai and Lane and Rory. These friendships are like cozy jumper 
they're solid, built to last, and they're really cute. And it's so refreshing when you compare it to how women were portrayed on TV at the time, it really stood out. And Babette and Miss Patty are always checking on the house, having a gossip, and genuinely relate to Rory in a really positive way, so that's really nice. For instance, when a guy wants to come over for movie night, Rory and Lorelai are really hesitant about this, they're uncomfortable with it because they enjoy so much their own company and just being together, which, I mean, I know their relationship could be a bit too much and codependent, but it was also at times really nice that they weren't like desperate, feeling like they needed a man in the house with them. So I'm just pointing that out because there's plenty of things that the show did really, really well. Yeah, check out my Gilmore Girls playlist in the description if you are interested. If you want a cozy night in to watch them all, I would recommend it. They are very good if I say so myself. In case you're curious about the new backdrop, I'm currently filming from Paris. This is my second video I'm filming here, so I get to enjoy autumn in Paris, which is very exciting. And I have a feeling a lot of you guys are new here and you've just found me through the Gilmore Girls series recently. So feel free to subscribe and get here before 50K. And I will see you guys for the next video. Mwah.